Hey guys, welcome back to Banking on Cultura. I am your host, Victoria Jen Rodriguez, and I'm so excited to have you here. I decided to give you guys a behind the scenes look over the next few episodes of what went down at the Secure the Big Bag and Love Unapologetically Summit that I hosted in New York City back in November 2023 with Kara Elwell. You know, a lot of us right now are thinking about the new year, thinking about our goals, thinking about what intentions we're gonna set for ourselves, and some of us might feel a little stuck, right? And unsure of what are the next steps that we need to take. And so the next few episodes is going to take you on a journey, a journey of exploration, a journey of reinvention, but most importantly, a journey of self-reflection. So you can go into the new year prepared, right? And you can have a clear understanding, but most importantly, real strategies for you to go after and secure the big bag and love unapologetically, both yourself as well as the people that you love most in your life. So make sure to have your cafecito, make sure to get comfortable, honey, because you are going to be edutained, okay? Entertained, but also educated. Enjoy. Get your notepad out, get your pen, get your, get your phone notes, all that stuff, because it's about to get really, really good. So I wanted to make sure that in the spirit of securing the big bag and loving unapologetically, that we addressed money trauma. Because for many of us, we have preconditions that were bestowed upon us through family, how we were raised, and just society now with how they're pushing certain things down our throats. So money trauma is a big issue that is on the table and that many of us are experiencing or suppressing one or the other. And I wanted to have this conversation with Miss Sonia Lewis because Sonia has an amazing story, self-made millionaire from Philly, um, and has also gone through her own experiences with money trauma. So, Sonia, can you please introduce yourself to the folks? And I want y'all to clap for that. Y'all was broke. Clap again. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everyone, good evening and good to see you guys. Uh, so yes, yeah, Sonia Lewis, CEO of The Student Loan Doctor. Super excited to be here and support Victoria. The event is beautiful, I'm so proud of you. Um, so what part do you want me to jump in and start with money? Like where should we start? So I want you to start at the road to millions. What created the shift for you and what were the money blocks you had to overcome? Because came from nothing, mm -hmm. came into something mm -hmm. and what were the mindset barriers that were happening during that time? Because for example, I have um, a colleague of mine, a gentleman who also had a similar story, came from nothing, became a millionaire, and he felt very guilty about being a millionaire because he was raised in very humble beginnings. So he kind of felt like an outsider. So did you experience some of that? I think I felt guilty until I purposefully moved away for a little. Um, I had moved from Philadelphia to Miami, and that's actually how we got closer when I moved to Miami because I realized that I needed to like literally change my environment and tell myself it's okay to enjoy money and it's okay to enjoy a new scene because the, the reality is if you never leave where you're from, like ever, if you, or if you never travel, you will not give yourself unconscious permission to experience experience new things. And so travel for me was a really big part of it. And when I was looking like, where should I go? I don't know where I should move. I don't. And when I went to Florida, anybody ever been to Miami before? You guys like it, right? So Miami has a norm. It has a way of normalizing luxury, has a way of normalizing money. And I don't, I think everybody there has it. I don't even know what they do for a living. I don't know what people do. I don't know if they ever work. I told her that. I was like, girl, it's always busy. And it's always happy hour. So um, I wanted to be intentionally in that headspace because I needed to help my own self out. And I needed to give myself distance from friends and family that were making me feel guilty about success. And if we were just a few years back, like three or four years ago, we probably would not be talking about money like this at that point because I felt very uncomfortable having conversations because I felt like a text message was going to come 10 minutes later. Like, you know, I am a little overdue on something. So, and I, and I want to say this, 
because you have to be very careful. And I just left an amazing mastermind. I just flew in today from Atlanta. And yesterday I was at a mastermind. I think it's very important to go to events like this and mastermind and, and do conferences and build on yourself. So I was literally in a room with 20 other individuals that looked just like me, but I probably made the least in the room, and I don't make a little bit of money. I was in the room with other people my age that are making eight figures, and everybody say legally. Because <laughs> it might have crossed your mind, is this legal or not? It's very legal. So, well, I'm going to help you out, because until I was in the room yesterday, I forgot the importance of masterminding. I have to give you all the notes. Yes. But it was so good to just hear people normalize. Like the one guy, I had to sit up straight after he said it. He said, you know what, guys? I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't want to talk about $100,000 deals anymore. I'm like, oh, I want to talk about them. He was like, if it's not at least $25 million a deal, I'm not doing it. Right. So I had to sit up, and I was so glad that I was uncomfortable yesterday, because that means I was in the right room. Say right room. Right. Anybody here felt uncomfortable today? Are anybody feel uncomfortable right now? You can be honest. You always should, thank you, I appreciate that. You should always try to purposefully get in the room where the conversation is just a little uncomfortable, because that's where growth is. Yes, and you touched on so many points here, because actually, Sonia and I, connected uh, because we had a, a similar person in common. And she hosted this beautiful event in Miami earlier this year in January on a yacht, rented out a whole yacht. Um, and it was a mastermind networking experience. And I was in the room with ultra successful people. Multimillionaires were in the building. And it was an amazing space for me to be in because I'm like, oh, okay, the conversations in here are different. Like, I'm talking about making a hundred grand on something, and then they're talking to me about, oh, I just closed two million in a month. I was like, ooh, tell me more. How, how can I do that? Right? But I would have never been exposed to that possibility if I wasn't in the room. Right, if I wasn't making myself uncomfortable. And there's different levels of uncomfortable, right? So for some you gotta know where you are and know where you're trying to go, right? So somebody's uncomfortable at a hundred grand might not be the same as somebody's uncomfortable at fifty million. Right. Right? So there's levels to it for sure. So Sonia, can you talk to us a little bit more about how you manage that with family? Because for many folks of color, money has been thought about as like this negative thing. There's a level of arrogance to it. You know, there's a level of greediness, right? Because how we grew up, many of the people with money, we felt were like super shady, right? So how, how have you worked through that? And how are you training the people around you to like respect what you have going on? We want to start with family. Okay. Okay. True story. I think I published something on social media for the first time that had said numbers in it. And it was like a second thought, like, uh, who's going to text me first? I was kind of betting on a dollar with myself. My uncle won. He said, he calls my phone. I never forget. He was like, Sonia. I said, hey. I'm not going to say his full name. You never know who's watching. He said, uh, the Lord told me not the Lord. that you have $1,000 for me. I said, well, I said, I didn't get that call. I said, did he got the right number? And he said, you didn't, you didn't hear him say that? So now I got time. Everybody said, you have time. You have to build in patience. Like, I knew the call was coming. I just didn't know in the form. And not Jesus, y'all. I said, so what's going on that you need the $1,000? Because 1000 is a lot of money. And I don't care how much money you make, and I'm not trying to be funny. I, Even though I make a lot of money, I'm still very conscious, and I'm still very savvy, and I invest. So just to hand you 1000 to go do what? Like, I don't even want to blow 1000 right? So I'm like, so what did he say? He was like, just to get caught up. Mm -hmm. I said, well, what's on fire? He was like, well, he was like, I, I, you know, I have something that's overdue, like 200 I said, that's what the Lord told me to send you. <laughs> now, you got to remember, everybody in here has to understand what their giving limits are without a lot of questions. Like, if it's a real fire and emergency, I got you, right? But if it's like you just want to, 
well, let me teach you how to make some money. But we're not just giving because if you give that person one time like that, they're going to keep doing what? And my biggest lesson was my best friend since I was nine in one year, I realized, and I didn't realize it because I'm so busy, I had gave her in one year, and this is around like July, $20,000. I didn't say loan, I said give. The car was $6,000, the, the cash apps are six fifty. dollars the this and the this and the this and the this. And I, and I don't know, she caught me on the right day. I said, what is going on? It was a 650 request every week, like close to every week. And I was like, I cannot fund you and your lifestyle. Like, this is weird. And so then I just realized, like, in that year, like, it's about to be a whole lot of no. So can I teach the audience something? Yes. Y'all want to learn how to say no? Yes. This is good. You have to keep practicing this, okay? Only, I'm only going to teach you my secret sauce if you're going to participate. Do you promise? Okay, I teach my students this, so this is good. All right, I think they're gonna participate. They are. I'm gonna teach you something called the Bambi. You ready? Okay, ask me a, a question, make up something about money. I need you guys to watch, and then we're gonna to practice together. Go ahead. Any question about money? Well, like, can you hold or have? Oh. Hey, Call me out the blue. Okay. Hey, Sonia, I'm, I'm really struggling right now. Um, my boo just left me, and I can't pay my rent, and he was paying my rent. Can you help? What? He left me, girl. Girl. Now, if we're on the phone, I want you guys to notice how hard you have to breathe into the phone. <sighs> Empathy. What happened? Girl, he called me with Tyrone. See, I know the babies is moving around here, but I'd have said something else just now. Like, I'm gonna call my phone dead. <laughs> All right, so let's just say <laughs> I'm trying to keep character. So let's just say I still know I'm not giving it to her. We all agree, like, I'm not doing this. Because if it's rent today, it's going to be rent when? Next month. Right. Okay. So um, so you know, Victoria, I really appreciate that you thought of me and uh, decided to probably call me first. Always leave that question open and always tell the person that you really did appreciate that they thought of you, right? But girl, in the season I am in, I just don't have it. I'm planning to do a lot of things with my money and I'm really tied up in investments. So unfortunately, I'm unable to help you. Now, this is where the Bambi comes in. If you're in person with the person, please watch my face. You ready? <laughs> you leave your mouth a little open, almost like a fly could come in. But the rule is, whoever speaks first loses. Because some of you guys don't know how to shut up after you say no. Did you catch that? So I'm going to do it again. So unfortunately, my money is tied up and I'm just not able to do it. And I also want you not to, women do this. Don't say in this season, don't say today, don't say this week, I'm unable to do it. <laughs> Little constipation look, you know. <laughs> you sure? Yes or no? Now, here's what's going to happen. It's going to get real uncomfortable. But who is it going to get uncomfortable for? I'm committed. I've been practicing in the mirror. I'm not uncomfortable. Do I seem uncomfortable? I might get a little parched, but you know. You sure? Damn, okay. All right, girl, well, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I know you got some other people to give a phone call to, but God be the glory. I'm going to say a prayer for you. And if you black, you know when somebody say, I'm going to say a prayer for you, that was the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to hang up, and that's it. The thing is, it's nothing else to keep going back and forth about, right? Okay, now, everybody, I need you to practice your B&B. &B. And you guys think I'm being funny. I really do teach my community to do this on Zoom. We have the best time. Usually they have wine, so it's even better. I don't know what you guys had today, so let's just try it. 
On the count of three, and I need everybody to participate, I'm going to tell you who's doing a really good job, okay? And if it's, if it's bad, I'm going to tell you because you're going to be the one to get got. All right. This is, your life is dependent on it. <laughs> your savings is dependent on this, okay? On the count of three, I need, no, nobody's above this exercise. This will happen to you, okay? On the count of three, I need everybody to do their version of Bambi, okay? One, two, three. And just hold that. I have to look at you. Carrie, you lost. You're going to owe them. <laughs> Victoria, you're smiling. You got the money. She definitely got money. She's cracking up. I see you, girl. You got it. <laughs> this is table is phenomenal. <laughs> Babe, you're doing great. I know I can't ask you for none. This is good. OK. This table is phenomenal. Sir, you've got money. I don't know what you're doing, sir, but I think that you don't got it. This is good. Keep doing that look. The table in the back is great. They don't, even, they don't even have it. They don't even know what the money is. This is good. Everyone give yourself a round of applause. You did amazing. This is good. Because when somebody asks you something stupid, you give them a stupid face. For, like, for you to call my phone and tell me that you was cheating on your man with Tyrone and then ask me to cover the ring. No, well, he got to cover the ring. You stupid. So now I got to be brought into this, and you know, uh, not to be funny, a lot of times, and I'm glad you used that example, most people pull you into stuff that's not emergencies. You do know that, right? It was stupid. You knew that the bill was coming up due, but yet, and I'm petty, I was in your stories, and you was at the bar the other night. That $40 is the same 40 you just asked me for. You should go back and get a refund on those drinks. But see, that's not, you know? All right, let's keep going. Love it. I okay. really appreciate that they did that. Yes, I did too. I Great really job, guys. This is good. So let's get into, so one of the tips you offered around money trauma was to do lots of traveling, right? To put yourself in new environments, which I love. You have this ideology around poverty panties. Mm. Can you talk to the folks about what that means yeah. and what has been your process? Because that actually has helped you work through some of your mom money trauma. It's gonna get a little heavy in here. Let me just say this, after this next segment, you may not like me, but you're gonna respect it, okay? I hope you like me, but it's actually not my intention of today. My intention today for this next part that she just asked, because we already talked about this, and this is where it can get a little controversial, is that people really get offended by what we're about to say, so brace yourself. So what happens is, I believe that as a woman, a mature woman, right, that you have a responsibility to upgrade your bras and your panties frequently. Now, this room might receive this. I might actually have friends in here. So here's what I know to be true. Women will put those things last, particularly if there's not a man seeing them every day. Now, hold on, stay with me. Because the thought is, I'm just going to work. I'm just going to work out. I'm just, and so what happens is, you're so comfortable with you, now you have old granny panties. <laughs> old bras that the boob is spilling over. No, honestly, you should think to yourself, how often do you go buy bras? Most women buy bras at best once a year. That's not something you're checking to do every other Saturday. Does that make sense? And bras can be expensive if they're brought right. But we buy a lot of stuff. Like if I was to ask you your Starbucks bill in here, I'm only saying it because that's where I go, or your Dunkin' Donuts bill, that's a bra. Everybody follow? I also think it's important for bra and panty to match. I, I could tell who's matching today because she claps. Now, you're probably like, well, where the hell is this going with the money? I know, you, right? You're asking? Does anybody see the correlation yet? Because I'm about to tell you. When you are your best self underneath your garments, like your shapewear, your bra, your panties, when they are their best selves, you actually are your best self for the day. There's no way I'm about to close a five or six figure deal in non-matching panties and bra. My brain wouldn't even allow it. There's no way that I want to wear panties. And, and I have to be real with you because I'm a plus size woman and this is a hard conversation I had to have with myself. Your panties should come above the stomach. <laughs> Some of y'all got old panties. They come under the stomach. You're not even supported there. How are you supporting the world? 
so, babe, sorry, I should have warned you about this part. So here's the thing. The reality is, and I even do this for men. Men do this too. Men will wear uh, wife beaters and drawers like they was in like a drive-by shooting. Holy. Holy. First off, if you, you know what, I'm going to just keep it PG. We just talk online. Like, don't even go for it, ladies, if it shot up. Like, something's not right. So let's just keep going. So I call them poverty panties. And what that means is, like, if you, oh, how do I say this? There's a certain time of month. Something happened. Accidents happen every day. You guys following? Throw them panties away. There's a thing that I know, because I heard this in college, like, I'm going to save these for next month. They washed them, y'all. But it was a thought that I'm going to have another. No, this is real. This happens for some people. Now, it may not be you. You grew up better. And it was me at one point until my girlfriend in college got me together. Because I was like, oh, I got to wear the black ones because of an accident. And then, I, and then she was like, girl, she was like, you could just go buy some more. And she just threw them out. I had to have somebody visually throw them out. So when you get home, an activity for this weekend is I want you to look at every bra and every pair of panties and say what must go. Break up with them. Because a lot of people do not throw away what? My good bra. You ever heard of that before? It was good two years ago. It's not good no more. The last thing I'll say to you is, and this is where it gets really tough, you have to think about when you're about to go out into the world, right? I always tease that the panties, the ball, the shapewear has to be right. Because if you're feeling really good about you, and let's say you have this really cute polka dot set on, I'm not trying to be funny, but you're going to walk better down the street. You're going to walk more fierce. You're going to be unstoppable. You got a little bow, a little, like, anybody ever tried that before? And if you're really trying to own your sexy, here's a tip. Somebody had taught me this. And she's a, a wife of a multimillionaire. She said, even if I'm laying around him in sweats, she said, I have the cutest rendition little set underneath. She said, you just never know. I said, oh, she's ready to go. Now, most people wouldn't think that far, right? Now, this is only important because when we start thinking about our mindset, guys, so when I was coming into some money and my business was starting to take off, I was driving around my Camry, and my Camry was paid off. But my bumper was a little iffy. Uh, it, it did a little thing, and sometimes I had to push it back up. But I'm like, this is a paid-off car. I'm going to keep this Camry. And then I realized, Victoria, I was like, but I really want to drive something nice because I feel better when I drive nicer things. Again, I like cars. Everybody here likes something different. And then I started to audit my car. When's the last time everybody in here actually vacuumed or cleaned their car? If not you, it got it serviced. When's the last time? Recently? But most times, guys, we don't do that. Sometimes our car looks like a reflection of our headspace. That trunk. We don't know what's living in there. I'm trying to save you some gas mileage if you just lighten that trunk up. Sometimes <laughs> you're carrying around like a whole storage unit, right? Your extra pair of shoes, bags, like I get it. Here's what I'm going to tell you guys. How you treat the car you have today will predicate, I believe, what God will give tomorrow. So when I knew that I wanted a nice car and I didn't know what that car was yet, I just knew I had to start treating Camry better. So I started every Saturday vacuuming Camry. Now close your ears because he knows I don't even want to vacuum no car right now these days. So it's cracking up. I see his face, y'all. This is good. But I really, really, really wanted a new car. So I was like, well, if I get car seat covers, if I vacuum, if I clean my uh, dash, if I scrub in my cup holder, right? So then I set my eyes on a Tesla. So I got the Tesla. And I told people, you cannot eat in this Tesla. You cannot breathe in this Tesla. Just we're going to go really fast and get you out of here. And then ultimately, once I brought myself a Lamborghini, I knew how to handle a nice car. Because of all the training that I had gave, gave myself with the Camry, with the Tesla, I had a BMW, I just had a lot of cars. But when I got the Lamborghini, I had an appreciation for it. I had suede interior almost everywhere. I don't even want you to breathe too hard, it might change my suede. You cannot even bring greasy food in here. I don't want the smell to stay, right? So I was so particular about these things. Now I say all that to say, and I'm only giving this story as an example because sometimes in the room we always ask for more. We want a better house, we want a better car, we want a better, but what are we treating that we already have right now nice? 
If you're not treating what you already have nice, I believe that God is waiting for you to show him you can handle nicer things. Does that make sense? Mm. I love that. So you run what I think the only black woman owned student loan recovery company, <laughs> repayment, uh, <laughs> repayment company in the country. Yeah. And so you are constantly coming across people who are managing debt. Mm -hmm. So can you talk to us a little bit about good debt versus bad debt? What is your theory yeah. on that? It's, it's debt. It just sounds so cute when we put the word good or bad in front of it. You have to have your own philosophy with money. Does everybody know where they stand at with money, yes or no? You can say yes or no. And if you don't know, I appreciate the honesty because I had to really dig into what I thought about money and how I wanted to use money. So I believe that money is a tool that God gives you to advance his kingdom. Period. Now I know in order for me to be a good giver, I can't be what? Broke. <laughs> Good givers cannot be broke. Anybody in here want to be a good giver? Right? So if I want to give to my family, if I want to give to my community, if I want to give in terms of scholarships, if I want to give, 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 I can't be broke, 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 or it's not going to feel good to give. And I know that I am a giver. Does everybody in here know if they are or are not a giver? That's step one, self-assess. Because if you're a giver, you're going to have a problem with not having money to give. You're going to almost feel conflicted on the inside. Or if you're not careful, you'll give from a pot that's not full. So now you're struggling to make ends meet, but so-and-so got it because you're such a good giver. That's weird. We got to correct that today, right? The other part about this is, and what was the first part of the question? Good Good, Good debt, debt versus bad debt. So when we talk about student loan debt, and, and, and so I run a business called The Student Loan Doctor, and so we have got like a lot of national press and accolades, and I think the thing that makes us really stand out is I'm not interested in why you have the debt. You're grown. Most people come to us with 50, 60, 200, 300. I see, saw recently 700,000 wow. double doctorate. That's her business. I'm not saying, Victoria, what happened? That's, who cares? It happened. What I do care about is how do we get you out of the debt and how do I get you to not go back in? Disproportionately African-American women and Latina, am I saying it right? Latina women, I keep saying Latino, Latina. Latinas. Thank you. <laughs> women have the most debt. What happens is we see them get out of debt at age 40, 42. They go back in at 55. It's called a parent plus loan. You, some of you may know of it, right? So you have to be really mindful that that 10 years, you have, like, I call it the sweet spot to do something really big with your money and even up to then. And that's when we talk about, like, are we talking about debt in terms of investing? You know, and the reality is, guys, when you think about debt, you have to, everybody in here, I need you guys to listen to this. You have to understand your pers personal threshold with debt. What do I mean? Any, no, I'm not going to ask you this question. I'm just going to put myself on the spot. So I was diagnosed with lupus. Anybody ever heard of it? Anybody know anything about it? You do? Thank you. So if you have an autoimmune disease, and there are other diseases that are triggered by what? It starts with an S. Stress. I get stressed over money. I don't want to be stressed over money because my lupus may come out of remission. Everybody following? Now, you all look really good, but nobody looks like what they're going through. Would have never known she also had lupus. Does that make sense? So everybody in here has to understand what is the thing that keeps them healthy or non-healthy from a mental health perspective. Somebody can get really stressed when it comes to money, and it can make up here clouded. Bad judgment, irritated, not a good mom, not a good sister, not a good daughter, not, not a good wife, because this is really bad up here because of money. So, Victoria, I think what we have to start having conversations around debt, because debt is a thing. It is a card note. It is a credit card. It is a student loan. It is whatever you invest in. But what is your personal threshold with debt? If you're someone that you don't like to owe a lot of money or you don't like to have a lot of overhead, have that conversation with yourself. Does that make sense? If you have a high tolerance, then you might be really, really, really good at investing in terms of real estate. The Burr method, are you familiar with that? That's when you buy a house, 
You take the equity and you buy another. You take the equity and you buy another. Anybody familiar with that or have done that before, right? So look it up. It's a book called BRRR Method, Burr Method. Very, very popular way to accumulate a lot of properties in a little bit of time and recycling the same money. So I'm in real estate. My friend says, Sonia, why don't you just do the bird method and, and let's get these properties? Ah, threshold. Where in that equation would stress me out? Anybody? A debt on a debt on a debt on a debt on a debt. This is the song that never ends, like, right? <laughs> and at the end of the day, you are, with the Burr Method particularly, you're utilizing the property, maybe for rent, Airbnb, you guys following? But who owns it? The bank. So now you owe multiple mortgages. Did y'all see the economy outside? So I have friends that are in that process, and guess who's stressed out? Because does anybody remember in the pandemic, what were, they, what were people told they didn't have to pay? No. Oh, yeah, girl, don't get me started with that. No, it starts with R. Rent. Now, what if I would have took the advice and did the Burr Method, because that's what all my friends are doing, and, it's, and they're doing it well. But who would have been stressed times 10? So when I purchased my properties, I did them all cash. I'm going slower, but I sleep well. So let's talk about this, Sonia, and we've got five minutes left. The fear of money. Mm -hmm. How can one overcome the fear of money? Because they will have aspirations to be more, do more. But if they have this fear about, oh, you know, spending too much money or even taking on debt. Or investing. Right, or investing. How can one overcome that fear when it comes to money? Well, first off, who gave you the fear is the question. Okay, let's, let's do this together. Sometimes you got to rob Peter to pay. Money don't grow on. Who taught you that? <laughs> really, the grandparents. Thank you for being honest. But I wasn't going to throw my grandma under the bus, but you did. Right, so <laughs> parents and grandparents, right? And they didn't know any better. But these are new times, and there's new ways in which you can make and earn and invest money. But these things stick in your head, down to how you do things in the house. There's things that everybody in here, I'm sure, does to save a little money. But that's a poverty mindset that somebody gave us. You have to be very, very, okay, what's the book? Oh, my goodness, I'm going to have to send it to you, send it out to everyone. Um, Something with good with money. It's a yellow book. Oh my God, anybody read it? Um, Get good with money? I don't no, know. no, no. It's not happy money. It's going to come to me, guys. But I think everybody here should read it. I'm going to give it to you. Can you send out? I'm coming back for this. The, the whole concept of the book was she just talked about your relationship, your personal relationships with money. What I want to say to you is that you're not fearful, Victoria. Most people are not fearful. They're unaware. They're unlearned. Until you are in the room with other people, like I was yesterday, talking about money in a grand way, in a non-scary way, and almost, can I give you ladies a gift, in a detached way, I realize that I'm a little, even in this season too, attached to money. It is a tool. Everyone say tool. tool. And when you start holding it like this, and you start counting it, and you start, that's too, you too involved. It'll never grow. It's scared to do anything because you're scared to let it do something. So what I will challenge everyone leaving this session, I appreciate you guys sitting through this because sometimes this is not that comfortable. I know when somebody said these things to me, I was like, I don't like this. Like, who is this girl? You know, and to be really, really honest with you, uh, Victoria, I have to say this. There are ebbs and flows of money, right? So my business survived three years of no student loan debt. But I'm going to tell you what happened. When I heard Trump say no student loan debt, like for a while, not just a month. Remember it was a month at first? You got, y'all on pipe, I remember. <laughs> it just kept getting pushed back. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to lay people off. Like, oh my God, I don't want to, I don't want to. 
And I'm going to be really honest with you. There's going to be two things that are going to happen to somebody in this room. When you get put in situations and you get put up against the wall, that's how you know what type of dog you have in you. And, and I already knew what I knew, and I was like, girl, you're about to figure something out. And that's actually, the pandemic is when I actually made the most money I ever made. I made a few million in the pandemic because I wasn't giving up my business. Now, was I doing anything with student loans? No. So, Victoria, I'm going to give them some gifts they can use. So, I believe that everybody in here, please write this down. This is an activity you got to do this weekend when you get a little alone time. And also, guys, I also recommend when you leave events like this, try to maybe not go home right away. If you have to go home, I get it. But if you could always, like, go to a coffee shop or just decompress with what you received today, it just makes the difference. It makes today more valuable. I just want you to think about three ways that you can bring in money. And I'm going to give you the help with that, if you don't mind, because this is good. I like tangible stuff when I leave events. What are three things that you are really good at that somebody could pay you for? And then somewhere on your paper, write legally. <laughs> I don't know what that means for people. Y'all think I'm joking, like legally is a real thing because it's a lot of crafty people that take shortcuts. The most brilliant people take shortcuts because that's what they were taught. But if you put that energy a little different, you know what I mean? So legally, thank you. Three things in a way in which you can make some money. What are you really, really good at? And if you don't know, I'm sure you have really trusted friends and family members that can help you with this part. So the thing that I'm going to tell you is I have the ability to teach. My mom's a teacher. My grandma was a teacher. All my aunties was a teacher. Child, I feel like I was just in a teacher boot camp my whole life. <laughs> but I told my mom, I got smacked for this. I remember that smack. Anybody ever get a hit that you remember? Remember my thigh. You can see how traumatized. You see how my thighs start going like that? I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I want to be a teacher. I was like... But you don't make no money, so I don't want to teach what you teach. <laughs> I am a teacher, and I make a lot of money. The gift of teaching is a gift that can be duplicated and used in any format. So if you're a teacher, go teach something, right, and do it in your own form. If you are a writer, go write something that inspires somebody to do something. If you are a doer with your hands, go do something. So long story short, in the pandemic, I think we talked about this. I started the Airbnbs. I did a Toro. Anybody here have good credit? OK, I so leveraged my credit and had 13 cars. And I made about 20,000 a month on Toro. It was good. Now, I follow trends, and I knew to get the hell out, too. So when them cars start going down, them cars went right back to the dealer and got sold out, right? So whatever it is that you got to do to bring in a little extra, what does that look like for you? Because everybody in here, last thing, write down the number it is that you need to make a month. Like, and not your budget. Like, we know what our budgets say we need to make, but what does happy cost a month? What is you uh, at the theater look like every month? Or what, it, what are you at a play? Or what, are you, what do you guys like to do? Give me something. Like, what do you like to do? The spa, thank you. I love weekly massages. That has to be built into the budget. What else? Travel. Maybe, every, uh, maybe once a, uh, one week in a month. What does the happiest version of you look like a month? That's where we got to get to. That's the disconnect for most women. And most women don't think like that because, Victoria, here's the sad news. A lot of women in here tend to be the strong one, and they put themselves last. But if you would rework that model to say, if I put myself first in the sense of being my highest and best and most productive self, it comes from the top down. Everybody gets a better version of me. My husband gets a better version. My children get a better version. My coworkers get a better version. Because guess what? I just left the spa every Sunday. I'm so excited to see you, Bob. How's the kids? Could you imagine if you went back to work on Monday after leaving the spa every Sunday? You actually would like these people. All right, I'll stop. No. But that's what you have to start thinking like. I want to... I wanna end this with communities of wealth and why it's important for you to insert yourself mm -hmm. and also invest in opportunities oh, yeah, sure. uh, to not only grow your wealth, but be exposed to, to, to new ways of creating revenue streams for yourself. What I think about in terms of investing in yourself, um, okay, this is going to be big. I'm going to talk about how I made my first million. 
when I made my first million, I only had $175 to my name. You guys following? Okay. When I made my first million, I only had $175 to my name. My friend said to me, and just like today's event, literally just like today's event, it was a little smaller, said, girl, you got to go to this event, and the event costs $150. You guys following? Just breathe with me. I'm just replaying this in my mind. Now, it's so funny. Even when I tell this story, I still get tight because I remember, like, I don't want to give that up. I only had how much? What would that leave me with? And I didn't tell y'all this was the week before pay. So I said, well, self, I was like, you already have gas in the car. This is a true story, y'all. I was like, it is food in the fridge, and you could just go eat with your grandmom on Thursday. Y'all don't know about strategic planning. That's fine. This is the bougie room I see. So I told my grandma ahead of time I'm coming over for dinner on Thursday. The, the, the food was going to run out. So I invested in myself. Everyone say invest. So I'm sitting in the room, and Victoria, I feel like this room is like me. And I'm like, if I put money out for something, or I get in a room, or I get into a, a coaching program, I get anything I get into, I'm going to make my money back probably times 10. Anybody feel that way? Like when you pay for something, you're looking for what's the return, and you got to get it within 30 days. I feel like you guys are like that. So fast forward, that 150 leveraged me to have a relationship with a gentleman named Nehemiah. You know him, right? And that's who actually invited me to the mastermind yesterday. We stay in touch. And I told him, I said, I'm so glad that I literally gave my last to be here. I know I'm going to. And he was really interested by me saying that this was my last. And he was like, well, keep me posted, whatever I can do to help. And I followed up. Everyone say follow up. Follow. You know, most people don't keep in touch with people like Victoria after this. Like you all are now in her community or probably already were, but will never follow up on anything else that she does. Everyone say that's weird. <laughs> Like, no, like, we have a relationship now. We're, like, like close. You're going to hug these? You probably already hugged them, right? So I feel like if I hug you, we're in. So I want to stay connected to the, to the source, right? And she is just so powerful. I mean, like, the flowers I have to give Victoria really quickly is, and I'm going to say this with love, Victoria always figures out how to get to the front of the room, be on the stage, or in the presence of the money. <laughs> Do you guys know that about her or no? You can say no if you don't know that about her. And I said, I like this. This is my type of girl. Because most women are not that bold or audacious, and sometimes they get called masculine. Or they, you know, there's weaponizing words that people will use about her personality. But that's my type of girl. And I also kind of felt like I knew she was from up north, too. Like, we didn't meet each other up here. I was like, I got to hold on to her. So long story short, when I invested in myself, I said, I got to stay connected to this community. Anybody in here a part of a community? Raise your hand if you are a part of a community. Raise your hand if you're not a part of a community. Raise a high. Don't be afraid. Yeah, okay. And the thing is, did we see how many people said they were versus weren't? Now, we, when we say we're not, we feel a little weird when we say no, right? It's okay. But we want to be a part of community because new relationships like this, this is where the new money, everyone say new money. New, money. new ideas live, right? So let's hit fast forward. I'm going to take them a lot in between. So... You have to get with someone that can coach you up. I'm not trying to be funny, but in this season, I'm looking for an eight-figure coach. I've done seven, respectfully. What does it look like to say, I don't want any deal less than a million? What does that look like? How do I say that so easily like you just said it, right? So you have to say to yourself, self, I'm looking for a coach that can put me here. Whatever that next level for you is. Everybody know what that is, right? So when we start thinking about Victoria investing in ourselves, we have to be really brutally honest, even if it's on the inside. I really need to get with people like Victoria, whomever you really adore that's doing things, because I got to do what she's doing. And so my person was Nehemiah, same background from Philly, right? Nothing super special, but his work ethic is out the world. And I resonated with that. No one's going to outwork me. If you want to be really honest, I am surviving right now on three hours of sleep over the last 72 hours because I committed in advance to being here. I was just 
in New York two days ago, then in Atlanta, and now I'm back in New York with you guys. There was no calling off. There was no Victoria, I got sick. And you saw me teaching before I came here because I have obligations. That's how you gotta be about yourself in this season. I think it's really cute when people get up here and say, oh, I made a million, I did. But do you got a million dollar work ethic? Does that make sense? You do, you just didn't know how to apply it to the money. I'm not trying to be funny, guys. We're here on a Friday. You could be a happy hour. And if you're going, let me know. <laughs> There's one. There, we have a reception after this. But most people, when you're in a room like this, I don't want to break the news to you, but you're weird with love. So now it's time to be even weirder. Now you have to think about how to invest in yourself. And this is what I was saying to me. Long story short, can I tell them about how much I gave for the program? Mm -hmm. All right. Talk about it, because this is good for me to hear. But you see how I shifted just now? Because I was like, oof. Again, I've had success with everything I'm telling you about. But what's your name? Jenny. Jenny? I just love her head nods. It just makes me feel good. I used to be a professor. So when somebody nods at me, I just like them. <laughs> Long story short, um, Nehemiah, he started a seven-figure coaching program. Now, mind you, he already helped me get to six figures at this point. We following? He put me on my first private jet. Now, when I say put me, I mean I paid for it, but he gave me exposure, okay? And I'm like, he ain't been leading me wrong thus far. I, I should check out his program. The first share, Carol, he opened it, it was 20000 Is that a lot of money to you guys? Yes, it's a lot of money, guys. Say yes. Like, don't be weird. It's, it's a lot. Don't, it's a lot. And I was like, now, what we get again? What are we going to eat? <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> like, I have these questions. He's like, yo, just send it over. Stop playing. I never sent it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have told you I did. That was year one. Kara, do you know he stopped taking my phone calls? A whole year without my money, buddy. Like, that hurt my feelings. Like, did he really, like, is he blocked? Am I blocked? But I wasn't blocked. He would go, you, you alive? You good? Okay, I can't talk. I'll get some money. So I saw he reopened the program. How much was the program, Kara? 35. Mm. Waited that year. <laughs> I, I'm, I am having a moment right now. This is a real one. I said, can I get the little sister discount? <laughs> can I pay the 20 that was on the table? He was like, a year ago, he was like, I didn't know how to make a million a month. So no. So, well. I said, how do I wire it? Mm. I did not have it. I had it. But what I just told you, I had the money like this. When he screenshotted me, the million he made in a month. <laughs> and I said, do you think that we would make that type of money together? <laughs> just curious. He was like, yeah. He was like, with you? He was like, your work ethic, we could do it. So we partnered. And we did it. And we split it. Do you know how many times I will hand that man 35K to have a return in 30 days of 500? Are you guys following? Some people, Victoria, I have to just say this, don't want to give up 197. Some people don't want to give up 297, 497. 997, because they're so fearful of what they're going to get. But my question is, you should be afraid of what you're not going to get when you don't invest and you know you should invest. Now, if this is not where you're at, that's okay. But what I do realize to be true is sometimes the lower part of ourselves says, I mean, I don't know if I put that type of money out if I'm gonna even be serious enough to follow through. Everyone say, that's weird. Jenny, when I drop the 35K, <laughs> phone on do not disturbed, there was no dating, there was no going out, there was no, what we gotta do? First off, I, if I had not had this dress, I would have my legs open like, what's going on? Like, what, do, what are we going to do to get the money? He said, we're going to have long days and nights, but this is a plan, and if you don't go astray from it. And everybody in here, I need you guys to hear this. That was the most coachable I had ever been in my life. I am a very headstrong woman, and I will debate with you until I'm not able to. And that was the actual time I shut up, and it yielded results. So I do know how to shut up, right? Victoria, here's the thing. You and I were talking about this. When you invested in yourself, because we talked about when you invested in yourself too, 
I feel like I always know when Victoria's on a new wave, when she's just made an investment. Can I tell them how I know? I want to know. I never no. told her this part. <laughs> Well, first off, she's actually one of the people that I really care about in terms of her social media. Like, I don't, it's like, for, like five people I really care about. Like, I'm like, this is good. And when she starts sashaying down that damn hallway, <laughs> and she starts twirling, Carol, you know what I'm talking about. And she got that red dress, and she's like, I said, she made some money. <laughs> I know the money twirl. You made some money then. I know you did. Facts. Then what she'll do is, I'm giving you all her secrets. Three days later, she'll go, you ever want to close a big client? Like LinkedIn and make it a step. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, she made the money with that client. Breadcrumbs. You got to get with the people that are doing what they're doing, and they're doing it happily and easily. Say happy and easy. Happy and easy. When I told you what I made, did, I know I seemed like I was stressed out, but y'all wasn't that bad. I would, I would do those 12, 13, 14-hour days again, wouldn't you, Jenny? Everybody in here can do it. The reality is sometimes you just don't have a coach to do it. But let me ask you guys a serious question. If you had a coach, I'm just curious because I don't know what you do or do not offer, uh, Victoria. But I just wonder, like, if people in here really had the opportunity to go next level, would you take it? Just yes or no? No, like, that wasn't convincing yes. I'm not sure. Like, yes. thank you, right? Because on the other side of somebody knowing what to do and to guiding you is your next version of yourself. And the last thing you guys should do if you're not sure what that next version of yourself looks like, if you have a journal and you take some time this weekend, just, in, just you and your journal, you need to write out what the next level of you looks like. I can't help you get taller, but maybe you can get thinner. You know, you could do some things with your hair, clothes, shoes, bags, travel. Like, what is the best version of you look like? How do you feel? How do you show up? Where are you going? Where are you eating? Not trying to be funny. I didn't know I like, babe, what's that steak I like with the little fat in it? Hmm? Bone and ribeye. Okay. And we eat at really nice, expensive places. But I didn't know that that's what I like. My ass couldn't afford that. I was on the other menu with the little strips. <laughs> but when I looked over to the left, and it, I said, I like this. I like lamb chops. All right, I'm not going to be funny here. I actually like a lot of things. But these things have a price tag to it. Do we agree? The very best. And it's not always about, like, food and items. Well, I like food. <laughs> But you got to start to know that once, not if, but once I get to this next level of me, I'm going to be able to do this, and I'm going to be able to enjoy this, and I'm going to be able to give this, I'm going to be able to treat this, my child will have this, my cousin will have this, my mom will have this, my dad will. You should write out a list of if you could be the best giver outside of you, what would that look like? How many people would glow up as a result of you leveling up? Now, I know we shared a lot today, and I know I joked with you. I intentionally talked about money boldly with you guys today. You do realize that, right? I did tell you that I had a Lamborghini or two. I did tell you that I lived a certain way, because what I realized is sometimes when women come to these events that look like us, we don't always feel comfortable to say. I'm going to be really honest with you. I feel really protected. My man, my man, my aunt, I know that none of you guys will get me. No, I'm joking. I also just wanted to normalize having these conversations because if you can't sit next to each other and talk about your monthly investment goals or what you just closed or how you just did this with a stock or what you, we're never going to get ahead as women. Men have these conversations like it's talking about getting some, some water to drink. If you don't believe me, ladies, you take yourself to a high-end a bar, let's say like at the W, right? You sit two seats, three away. You be modest. Don't be sexy. You want to be actually like not seen. And you get yourself your own drink and you just sit there and you listen. You hear the conversations about stocks. You hear the conversations about real estate. You hear the conversations about trades. You hear conversations that you don't hear with women. 
Do that for yourselves. And you should walk away feeling like, why are we as women not having these same conversations about wealth? And then we will start to change it. And then hopefully we fill up the W talking about the trade we just did or how we just bird six properties last month or how we just closed. And that's how the narrative changed. So first off, can we really please give Victoria a round of applause for having vision for this event? She doesn't get enough credit. The way she thinks, it was a no brainer to say yes to you. She sees it all the way through. And the thing that I love about Victoria is that she takes you with her. It's like no woman left behind. Does that make sense? So I really applaud you and I appreciate you. I appreciate you. And are y'all inspired right now? Like, this is why I love talking to you. <laughs> and this is why after going to your event, like, I mean, I fell in love with you when I first heard you speak at another event. But then seeing you in your element and seeing you execute, and seeing you doing your thing, and then had the opportunity to hang out with you in Miami and get driven around in that Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's my sister. I put on the what's, the, what's that sound you wanted to keep having me do? The, the oh, yeah, the room, room. It was amazing. You know, every time it was, we go it was room, a room, vibe. I was it like, like 20 yes. miles from the Garland to go room, room. And I'm not trying to be funny, you know, I'm still conscious. So I said, you want me to do it again? <laughs> no, but you know what was really dope about that is I was in Lamborghinis, but they were always owned by men. Yeah. Yeah. And now I was in a Lamborghini, and it was owned by Sonia. So I was like, yes, like this is what I want to be around. And I actually had um, Ashley, our amazing event planner, bring me my phone because earlier today, I did actually offer people a strategy call with me. I did, but I only offered it up to 10 people, and the 10 slots were full. But I asked her to bring hey. my phone so we could open more slots because I was just so inspired by what you were saying. And I was like, I think this is landing with people. And a lot of people are in that state of transformation. They're in that era of, I want to bet on me. I'm going to do it. I need to be about this life. And then the gems that you dropped around how you were able to turn your 175 into multi-millions. Yeah. We need to push that forward. And we need to recycle that process. So... I asked them to add an additional 10 seats. Okay. So it's oh, the same process. Aren't I cute right here? You are very cute. <laughs> it's the same process, guys. I'm keeping it at the same price. So if you That's scan good. it, I know some of you I spoke to earlier and you were like, I want to book the call. And some of you couldn't even give me reasons why not. Mm -hmm. Right? And after hearing today's conversation with Sonia, hopefully you got an answer. Right? Because once you're able to get that self-awareness as to why not, then you're able to take the action. You still have this opportunity to tap in. This call is a strategy call, right? So we're going to get into the nitty gritty of what it is that you want to do. And even if you don't know what you want to do, that's what the call is for. Like, let's figure it out. <laughs> if you're not in proximity with someone that is already doing a million or making millions, that's why I gave up the 150. I knew that that young man was on his way to the million, and I'm not trying to be funny, Victoria. People in these seasons have to hold on when they see somebody moving so that they can go with them, because not a lot of times people want to take you with them. It is really cute for you to just be on TV and be where Victoria's at and just be like, hey, social media. But when you come into a setting and you say, I'm extending myself, and I want you in the room with me, and I want to think of you for your projects, and your, and I just don't even know if they really understand the vastness of you. Like, she is the money. She left leverages the money. And so the ideas that you're about to birth, can I just tell them, like, you're the money. <laughs> we the money. Okay, can we well, get an amen but on no, that? You so ideas, execution, no, she's really the relationships. You know relationships is more important than money, right? So toast to you guys. And toast to securing the big bag and loving unapologetically. Cheers! Yay! Yeah. Espérate, espérate. Let, hold up. Let's roll this back for a second. Have you hit the subscribe button? Are you making sure you're tuning in every Tuesday when we drop a new episode? Y'all, you don't know how important it is for you guys to not only tune in, but leave us your feedback. I want to make sure that we are providing value. I want to make sure that we are providing content that is really resonating with you. And the only way for us to know that is to hear from you. So make sure to subscribe and leave your feedback after the episode. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, I'm pretty sure you're gonna love the next one. So make sure to click right here and tap in to the next episode.